It's uh, regarded to the to the uh, to the what's called uh, rearrangement type chemistry uh, very in the very beginning. I think I mean you, you're talking about um, protecting and putting the, the, the putting the alpha beta and saturated aldehyde and do it. Uh, we did not try more. We did not try more. You see a bit of when you l make it longer. You see a bit of matched mismatch case because in one. By using, because now you already have a chiral molecule, and by using the two different catalysts, uh, you will have a difference in reactivity. One is much faster, one you need to add more catalysts, and probably the DR is also slightly worse in one of the other cases. So you can do this. If you do it for the match case, you probably will be able to do it again and again, but this is not like a polymerization case. It's still stepwise. You need to protect. You need to deprotect. You need to make the homologation. Now you can do the things again. I don't know how many cycles you can do this. Probably more than two, uh, but I have no idea how long you can do the chain. Is it, is it Yes. Less. Because the more negative it is, the higher degree of aromaticity or degree of aromaticity it is. So if you have a positive value, you have a positive value for this. So it, e yeah. is more than A and C. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, you mean the com direct com comparison? Yeah. I think, um, yeah, in this case, from this result, then I have to say yes. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't. I cannot explain you more why. The, if you, if it's because possible there to directly compare. Yeah, I know. This, yes. Uh, yes. <clears throat> yeah. Yes. Yes. I, no. Uh, no. The, no. Uh, the, the, the reason I think also uh, is also based a bit. This is why I think you should have to compare as similar substrate as possible, and also following the, uh, the uh, similar, for example, similar transition states. Because what you do is that you place something like a dummy atom above, uh, above or in the center of aromatic arom aromatic ring, and then. Of course, you have, the, based on the substitution pattern of what you have on the ring, that will also contribute to the value because this is basically a, this is basically a, a, a NMR calculation. So if you place a dummy atom in the center, or in this case, one angstrom above each ring, where will the chemical shift of that come? And that, and that of course, if all chemical shifts is depending on the different substituents on it. So of course, you can say over here you, don't, you do not have a, a, a alkyl substituent compared to the other two. This might be a bit, a bit biased. But then we looked into a set of different, this is only some of the results that, that we show. We went into a different type of magnetic probes for this, and they all show the same trends. I just did not have slides to put all of this on. But of course, it is true. But by looking at the numbers, then this is more, in absolute numbers, this is more aromatic in a way than the other. But we have to remember that this is a basically a chemical shift calculation. Uh, but it's a good enough. This is one of the only way to de do, to describe the aromaticity level of aromaticity because a lot of people don't like to talk about more aromatic or less aromatic, uh, and you cannot look at geometries and different things. So magnetic properties is one of the only thing they can look at, but. I think if you look by combination with the homo energy and by combination with the activation barriers and in, in together this gives us a picture that it, there's a tolerance between the computational results and the experimental results. It's not used as a prediction, but just saying that these two things actually fits okay together. Hmm? Uh, yes, but... Uh, our computational uh, chemist is very sad because usually all of her results goes into the supporting information because of lack of space. <laughs> but it is there. All of these things are there. This color. Oh, in the beginning, 
Sorry. In the beginning of the hemisphere, yes. uh, the amount of catalyst is shrink more. Yeah. Today it's possible to use five. Sure. I mean, for some of the reaction, it is, it is possible to lower the catalyst loading. I mean, I think, it, I mean, I did not go into the details, but I think you also have some, when you don't have a good dienophile and so on, you have, a, you, you have some kind of catalyst inhibition by Di maybe dimer catalyzed dimerization of two dienols in different ways and so on. We have isolated these type of products when you add, when you don't add any additional dienophile and just let the reaction go on, then you see different uh, byproducts appearing and that somehow inhibits the catalyst. So usually it was always using 20 mol percent because then we're sure we don't, each catalyst don't have to go through that many catalytic cycles. But um, I think this decomposition or this inhibition pathway, we should probably study it even more and, and look at which, which, uh, in, uh, which parasitic species there are. But this you can in, actually inhibit by changing additive. So different acids or different bases, you can change this and then you see less of this type of pathway. But at the, at the same time, your reaction goes slower. So you have to balance, either you want to inhibit this pathway and, and let the catalyst work longer, but slower, or you want to add a bit more catalyst and, and speed the reaction up. So that's just a balance. But we don't know exactly what, how the species look like, but we know that the catalyst is inhibited over some time when there's no reaction at all. Yes? How I think it's just uh, usually in a lot of these reactions, the condensation of the catalyst is the rate determining step. Uh, a lot of cases actually uh, of these reactions. Uh, for, um, but uh, the fluorination reaction, I th it could be the condens it could be that's easier to condense because they should go through the same enamine species uh, for, the, for the attack. So that, it, that it cannot be difference in transition state energy from that because they should go through the same enamine species. The only thing I can think about is maybe difference in, in, difference in condensation. Um, but of course, the fluorine is very small and, and it's very difficult to imagine that that will give you, 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 you that kind of difference. But in, we could, I mean, this, I did not do this experiment. This experiment was from a long time ago. People were monitoring the formation of the product and seeing that EE was dropping. Uh, EE was increasing over time and so on. Uh, and actually also I told some, told some of the students is that by lowering the catalyst loading, you get higher and higher EE. Uh, and you, not, you, you do not get higher and higher EE, you get higher and higher yields. Because even if you have a lot, high amount of catalyst, you form a large quantity of difluorinated products because then both will go. So that's why the reaction works down to 0.25, probably also down to 0.1 mole percent catalyst performed on larger scale. Yeah. Any other wants a free beer? <laughs> Do I get one? <laughs> Yes. Again, sorry. You talk about the free radical reaction. Yeah. So by using organic catalyst, how we will control the stereo selectivity? Which reaction again? By free radical mechanism, any reaction you are future pen. Yeah. My my future pen to combine the the. Yeah. I don't know, uh, the, the, uh, that's an honest answer. <laughs> I don't know where, where it will go. I mean, we're looking at different, I mean, you were talk, it's talking about radical, yeah. radical chemistry. Okay, I mean, it's basically balancing. It's a, it's a creative, uh, because we know organic catalysis works. People have did, done this. It's not like we are trying to do the first. People have done this. Uh, people have found uh, the, the, the good substrate to do it. And we are just trying to find other good but also interesting substrate and radical are, are, are very I mean radical you have to control the, the reactivity of radical chemistry you have to balance the reactivity versus the, the selectivity or control uh, and honestly this 
often is a lot of trial error. You might get a lot. I have had a lot of what I thought was brilliant ideas, and I try, and either you have uncontrolled reaction or you have no reaction at all. And maybe it's just sometimes very small change of setup that you, ha you can have the reactivity. I mean, um, this uh, I'm not that clear about where it will go. I mean, at the moment, I'm just trying to learn things and see what come up during the way, and if we find a good system. We're also trying to do some of these sideline induced system to create the radical, and R, type, R radical, and use it together with amino catalysis. It was not working very well. Um, so I don't know exactly. That's an honest answer. 